if there is faithfulness in the placement of your calling, God is going to bless you. So the third symptom of a calling is that one of the ways you know you are in alignment in a calling is the blessing that accompanies it. You begin to see God going out of his ways to make provisions available to fund that intent of his that he has committed to you. Even when we started, we never lacked money to do the thing God called us to do. And I can tell you confidently that the expenditure per month when we started was 100,000. In 100,000, if we have 100,000, we can run the ministry for one month. So, those of us that were working class made the 100,000 naira available. We were running. I don't want to... Okay, let me tell you the real matter. It was in a place of prayer. The Lord spoke to me and said, we should give him 100,000 every month, me and my wife. So when we give, if we give this 100,000, it means that our car should not get spoiled and nobody should fall sick. Because if any of the above happens, we will not have what it takes to go through the month. We have accepted to give God the 100,000. That 100,000 was sufficient to take care of the ministry in one month. Are you there? So, when we started giving this 100,000, one month after we started giving the 100,000, my executive from the city of Abuja came to visit our depot. And when they came to visit our depot, we had interactions, we had, yes, we had interactions. They asked for pandediam, I took them where to eat pandediam. And then they went back. When they went back, our chief executive asked that they should bring my fire. They had denied me promotion for four years. And when they brought my fire, the man looked at my fire and saw that I'd been denied promotion. He called the head of admin and asked him, to give me all my promotions and restore my status to what I'm supposed to be and pay me all the arrears. I just gave the 100,000 for one month. Are you there? The man they called to change the records was the man that vowed to me that I will never be promoted. Was the same man that they summoned and gave a directive to effect my promotion. Promotions come out in January. But that my own promotion came out that day in June. It was backdated. Are you there? So the next year, I became eligible for the next promotion. It was backdated. The money that I used to build at my house is that the areas of that promotion that they gave me that I used to build that house. And then because of the promotion, my salary increased. So even though someone falls sick or the car has a problem, in spite of the 100,000 we gave, we had enough money to take care of ourselves. Are you, are you following me? You are not following me. You are not following. I'm, I'm telling you real life issues so that you will know that if it is a call we are committing to, there must be a blessing. Don't hear any other story otherwise. When you see somebody claiming to be attending to a call and you don't see signs of God's commitment, ask him, are you, did I call you? No, that, you are not with me. You are not. <laughs> did, did they ask you to do what you are doing? The other day in my village, somebody came and said, he saw, as he was all and about the calling, he saw Satan with a fork flying. And said, when he finished telling the story, I said, is it true that you were called to do this thing? Because we are doing more dangerous things than you are doing, but we have not seen Satan fly. We have seen, instead, we have seen God's faithfulness push us forward, push us forward in a way that we know that he's the one that is at work. He said, I will bless you. It's not as if you prayed for it. Blessing becomes a consequence of aligning to the calling. He didn't say, okay, now that I've called you, you will labor in prayer. Then I, no, he said, I will. What? Yes. Guess what happened? The next year, I was eligible for promotion again. The man went and brought my fine. He said, he asked for the fine again. So the next year, I was promoted. So I had two promotions in two years. And that was how my status was restored. I was flying in the ranks. And I never missed a promotion again until I resigned. Never missed it again until I resigned. As at the time I resigned, the ministry did not need my support to survive. The ministry had found its footing, and the Oasis of Grace had attracted sufficient resources to keep the ministry standing without my own impute. Are you there? So I stepped out 
on the orders of Jesus. I did not step out, step out because we became comfortable as a ministry. I stepped out on the orders of Jesus. And when I stepped out on the orders of Jesus, I was wondering how to feed because there were people that God had given to me to take care of. And when he asked me to stop work, he did not ask the people to leave. So I went to him in prayer and fasting and said, okay, you asked me to stop work. My last salary was 1.2 million naira every month. And that is exclusive of my allowances. That's my basic salary. My housing allowance at that time was 15 million a year. And you know there's no house that I rent in Makati for 15 million. Are you following? You need to be mad to resign from that job. You need to be mad. If I had waited and be become a management staff, my housing would have been 19 million a year. And by monthly, you have allowances in addition to the 1.2 million. I could buy a car any month of my choosing. And Jesus said, step aside. You know, those days we felt that the best thing that happened to us was the job that we're doing. That there's no... Yes, in the Nigerian context, I was earning the salary of a brigadier general. Yes. As at the time of my resignation. It was foolishness to say you want to resign. But you see, the things of God look like foolishness in the eyes of men. It was on the orders of Jesus that I stepped aside. And when I stepped aside, I went to Jesus for prayers. And I said, you asked me to leave the job. You did not ask the inhabitants to leave the house. So what arrangement do you have for upkeep of this great house? You know what he told me? Teach the Bible. Teach the Bible. And I was wondering how teach the Bible was going to be a solution to my practical problems. I was doubting that his answer. Until one day, I did a teaching. And then people began to give me, send money to my account with Zenith Bank. I came from church. Then, we, we're not here yet. We're in the old place. I came from church and drove home. When I got home, I opened my phone. The alert that came on my phone that night was equivalent to my previous one month salary, 1.2 million. So he gave me what I used to earn in a month. He gave me that same amount, exact amount, in one day from teaching the scripture. Then I knew that that strategy that God had given could sustain me. I had no doubt in my heart. No doubt. 1.2 million. I said, in one day? You know, it was big. <laughs> I give more than that almost on a daily basis now. As you are seeing me, ask Pastor Dan, we were talking today. It's an easy thing for me to empty my account if Jesus has spoken to me. My contribution to this building was 70 million. After giving that 70 million, my financial status changed. I don't need to preach for people to give me. And that's why I don't accept an invitation that Jesus, you can, what, I will, what I will get staying behind this pulpit and teaching, nobody can give me. I've seen that. I know this practically. What I stay here preaching, what comes to me? I have not gone for any meeting where anybody was able to give me. If you see me accept an invitation, God has sent me. God has sent me. There's no place I like more than the city called my according. No place. Oh. Oh. My bones will begin to ache. I know that the bones are aching for the city of Macon. The moment I see the bridge, fresh life comes upon me. <laughs> so when I entered yesterday night, fresh life, fresh life came upon me. There's no, no honorarium prophet offering that I'm giving anywhere that is likened unto what. When I finish teaching, somebody somewhere is touched. Sometimes I want, I ask my wife, where is this money coming from? Before I sleep to wake up, God has told me the people to send the money to me. Sometimes in the dream. In the month of January, he would not stop asking me to give. This month, before the Spirit of God could allow me rest, I had given 15 million. That's when he now allowed me rest. In the kingdom of God, giving is a big thing. Please help me tell your neighbor. In the kingdom of God, giving is a big thing. It's a big thing.
So there was no need for the inhabitants of the house to go. There was no need. Because if you are fulfilling the call, he will bless you. I'm not talking about manipulated blessings. You know, have I ever come to you and maybe I cajole you so that you can give? No. I know, and I'm not trying to undermine you. You are doing your best. You are doing what you can. God bless you indeed. But there has been no, we've done great projects here. And no time did I ask, did I manipulate anybody to give? I will announce it. This is what we want to do. And go and sit down. Before you know it. Five million. One million. 500,000. After two days, three days, what we need is either the money comes to the ministry or the money comes to me. And the moment it comes to me, I know it is for that work. Strange 10 million just comes to me. It is, is, is going there. Strange 20 million just comes. It either comes to me or it comes to the ministry. And we put it there. Anytime we have a need, I don't have any property anymore until that need is met before I can say I have money. Before I built that small house, we built the tent. Before I built the other one, we built this one. If, we, if God doesn't have a place, I, would, I don't need the house. I don't, need. I don't need the house. And I will bless you. There will be an evidence that there's an allocation. My second trip to South Africa, a family just called me. If you go to South Africa, there's one estate. That's the best and the most costly estate in the whole of Africa. You need to be, it, that will be your closest, it will give you an idea it, it, that if earth is like this, how will heaven be? That is the closest idea of heaven on, on earth that you will see. You need to see the trees, the lawn, Jesus Christ. And you are walking on it, tongues will flow from here. Second trip to South Africa, then a family calls me and says, the Lord said we should give you something. So they, we enter the estate. That's an estate that you use, they use fingerprints to open the gate. If you are a resident in the estate, your biometrics is in the system. You, you, you touch it like this, the gate will. There's no estate like that in Nigeria. Not even Banana Island, because I've, I've stayed there. Echo Atlantic, I've, I've stayed there. We entered the place. They brought us to one side. And the people say, this is your house. It has swimming pool. I have not entered, I, I'm still, see, we've gone to the house twice. We stayed there twice. I, did, I, would, I didn't enter the swimming pool because I'm still wondering, is it true that it's our house? I, I couldn't enter. I did not pray for it. I did not ask for it. I did not manipulate the people. They had their own encounters. Then when we were in the house, everybody was sleeping. And I woke up and said, God, what are you doing? If we are not there, it's locked. The key is in my bag. The moment we come, they open it. They send us a cleaner that cleans the place. My only job is to lie on that bed and speak in tongues. I, oh my God. Pastor, <laughs> so then all that those uh, circumstances, tongue will flow. It will flow. If you come to South Africa or you have any business there, I give you the key. You'll be amazed. He said, I will bless you. Stop running from pillar to post. See, God, might, God, God may have told you, stand as an intercessor. Be foolish enough to obey it. Right there in your cupboard where you are hiding, if you are faithful, blessings will come to you right there. We went to the back, saw the swimming pool. They had filtered it. It was blue. One room downstairs. How many rooms upstairs? Three or four. And you need to stand on the balcony and just watch the beauty. If you have people with mental problems, put them up there. When they see the whole environment, they, they will be. And I will bless you. I will bless you. When I left the oil industry, everybody felt that was the best thing God could do. Serve Jesus. I no longer have respect for money. I can give my last dime if Jesus speaks to me. My last dime. 
And I've done it many times, emptied my bank account, pushed the money into the ministry. I've done it many times. The more I do it, the more the frequency of the, the frequency will increase. Or if I sow any amount to my father in the law, it takes 24 hours for it to come back. It doesn't matter the amount. And I've done this for more than seven years, 24 hours. So if I need to multiply money quickly, I just send it. 24 hours. There are some people that have something on them. And they have something on them. 24 hours. If I just need, maybe I need, there's a project and we don't have money. Even this one, they were building. I said, you people want money? Send five million. Then. That's how this one came. I want money? Uh, I won't ask you. What I have, I wait for 24 hours. What I gave will come back and then it will just be coming. Let me tell you something finally before I sit down. If God gives you money, and the reason why I gave you money is because of this. If you use the money to buy this, it will stop flowing. It may never pick up again. You didn't hear me. I said, if God gives you money, and he gives you the money because of this, don't buy this. If you do, the flow will stop. There is no formula that I know on earth that can reawaken that flow if you lose the alignment needed to keep it flowing. If he gave you money because of something he's doing and you squander it, it will stop. It is still worship. He's giving you money because of the things he's doing, not because of you. So you keep pushing it. A time will come, he will not ask you to push again. Then you can do your own. You can buy what you want. Sometimes you may even have money and you're going to buy something. He will stop you and say, ah, where are you going? Go back. So you carry that money and go back and keep it. In three days' time, he will tell you what to do with it. I will bless you. And the reason for which you are blessed is not because of you. It's so that you can be what? A channel. We fast and pray, then the anointing will accumulate so that you can be a channel. Fast and pray, the healing grace will come so that you can be, so your calling is going to make you a custodian of blessing. So things that should come to other people will come to you, not because it is meant for you, it is meant to be given out to them. You become a distributor. And if you are faithful in it, you'll be growing. The moment you decide to hoard the things God gave to people and you hoard it, ah, even the grace will not go on your life. Have you given 50,000 before? Have you given 100,000 before? You know what it feels? You know, and when you give 100,000, nothing happened. Have you experienced that before? You are, not full, you are not answering, so I will not be, I will not. When you start sacrifice, it will not speak instantly. In fact, the fact that you gave, Satan will come and, and beat you in the night. To intimidate you not to continue, become rascal. A time will come, anything you touch will turn to gold. We were to travel somewhere, so we went to Ghana, because the, the tickets from Ghana were cheaper. So we stayed over in a hotel and travel. So Philip was to travel. Philip, my son, was to travel. So he went there and they put him in that hotel. So the owner of the hotel and his wife, they just came out of the lift and they met them. So he recognized our pastor in Ghana. He said, hey, you people stayed in our place? They now asked, is this your place? They say, yes, we own this place. Say, you own this place? That, they put me here the last time. So it's free for us now. If I pass there, now it's free. So that's why we will not pass there. <laughs> they were building one hotel at a beach in Ghana. We went there to retreat, to pray. To... So I was walking on the beach. So the manager of the new hotel now asked, is this that preacher we watch on? They said, is he more? He now called our pastor and said, anytime that guy comes to Ghana, it's free. It will be difficult for us to go back now. <laughs> Have I told you the story? We're, we're four missionaries going to the UK. So I said, okay, don't pay for a business class ticket for me. Pay for economy so that four of us can travel. I was in the economy cabin when the air hostess came and asked my name. 
I had put the sleeping goggles because there were two women. I was sitting in between two women. I was just like <laughs> May the Lord give you understanding in, in this matter. The air hostess called me. I said, is this your name? I said, yes. I said, carry your things. And they moved me to business class. Every opportunity God has, he shows me that I want to bless him. You know the way, you know jet lag and all those stress, traveling, then you now come back. He pastor forced me in Lagos. We came back to Lagos. He forced me to preach for him. So I was tired. I didn't pray. Just came to the pulpit like this. And I began to pray for the sick. That's how they brought a blind man. The man started seeing. I, it was no prayer. I didn't pray before I went. The man started seeing. His son brought him blind. They brought him with the hand. Like he entered into the place while I was praying for miracles. His eyes opened. He started seeing. He started shouting. Started shouting. We lost that service. Then I went to the room. I said, hey, where are you? <laughs> Serve Jesus. Don't allow people to distract you. I have seen the goodness of God. I've seen the goodness of God. I've seen the goodness of God. While I was in the university here, only after my dad died, only one of my aunties ever believed that I had a need. And she didn't have anything. Only a small yam farm in Boko. My auntie that married a thief man. So used to send me yam. She did not know that those yams were the school fees of her children. Because when God began to help me, I ensured that anyone that wanted to go to school, any level, I will bless you so that you can do what? The first thing you need to do now, right now, before I leave this stage, is to repent because of the way you trivialize your calling. We finished preaching in Cuba. People, the guy that was in the front opened the window and people were throwing money in envelope. So I told him that I don't receive money like that. So the ones he has collected, it belongs to him, but he should wind up that window. That's not how I receive money. For me to collect money from your hand, eh? God knows you. So it's not as if we go around asking people, no, no, I will not even collect. I will not collect. The, the guy thought I was joking. He said, no, 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 these people you collected, I can't collect money from them. I can't. Until we reached my lodge, he now realized that I was serious. God has provided all things for me. So it's only that which God approves that will enter into my hand. I don't need an invitation. I don't need to be endorsed. Maybe say, this is a good man. A calling will make you, give you the status of being what? A blessing. Can we pray and say, Lord, help us not to trivialize your instructions. Help us not to trivialize your instructions. He said, cast not away your confidence. For therein lies a great recompense of reward. If a servant of God, if you decide that this my body will not be available for sin, God will take note of your commitment to purity. And he begins to make a plan for you. Oh my God, I will bless you. And I will make you a blessing. And indeed, shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Help me not to take your instructions lightly. Help me not to trivialize the things that are the desires of your heart. Help me. Help me to know that which will give you pleasure. Talk to him. Make me quick to respond to you. Make me quick to obey you. Teach me how to be a blessing to others. For it is written, Indeed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Help me not to lose my path. 
help me never to lose my way. <laughs> El Shaddai. El Shaddai. Elohim. And Adonai. Age to age, you're still the same. By the power of your name. Here shall die. Here shall die. Elohim and Adonai. I will praise and lift you high. Here shall die. God can take care of you. <laughs> Hell shall die. Hell shall die. Elohim and Adonai. Each to each, you're still the same. By the power of your name, Hell shall die. El Shaddai, Elohim, and Adonai. Each to each, you'll see the same. By the power of your name, El Shaddai, El Shaddai, Elohim. Elohim and Adonai, I will praise and lift you up. Oh, I shall die. Oh, I shall die. You shall die. You shall die. Elohim and Adonai. It's you and you're still the same by the power of your name. 